IPS stands for induced pluripotent stem cells. We can take a tissue sample from a consenting adult or a consenting child and reprogram that to become pluripotent. So it avoids a lot of the ethical issues currently surrounding human embryonic stem cells. And it basically means that then we can derive these pluripotent stem cells from individuals with known diseases. So for example, I can take a sample from an individual with Huntington's disease, turn that back into a stem cell, and then use that stem cell line to study Huntington's disease. So I could make neurons from that individual, use them in disease modeling and drug screening to try and better understand the diseases and possibly start creating better therapies as well. The great advantage of induced pluripotent stem cells is that once you've made them, you can replicate them time and time again so that the resource can be used by other researchers who don't have to go back to initial tissue donors in order to start the process all over again. And that's where EBIS provides an opportunity for the stem cells to be distributed to many other researchers across Europe accelerating research. For the last 10 years, researchers have been using induced pluripotent stem cells to understand disease and develop new drugs. These research programs have typically been local, and once that research is finished, those stem cells may never be used again for any other research. And so the resource that's been created just sits around not being used at all. In der Vergangenheit war es schwierig und komplex IPSC Linien äh, zu bestellen, so dass die FPA Gruppe beschlossen hat, dass es sinnvoll ist, eine zentralisierte äh, IPSC Bank zu etablieren, die es ermöglicht, in einem überschaubaren Zeitrahmen ähm, IPSC Linien zu bekommen, die qualitativ hochwertig sind, die gut beschrieben sind, zu denen auch Differenzierungsprotokolle existierten. EBIS is the European Bank for Induced Pluripotent Stem Cells, funded by the Innovative Medicines Initiative from Europe, along with support from the pharmaceutical industry through the FPA organization. The project started in 2014. We started distributing our first stem cell lines in 2016 with the launch of the catalog. The consortium is made up of 26 partners across Europe made up of pharmaceutical companies, SMEs, academic institutions, publicly funded research organizations and legal advisors as well, with members in Germany, the United Kingdom, Spain, France, Belgium, Holland, Switzerland, Denmark and Sweden. And between us we've been able over the last four years to establish this central facility for the receipt, testing and distribution of pluripotent stem cells. Within the EBIS catalogue we have lines from a whole range of diseases. So I think we have about 30 different diseases in the catalogue at the moment with more coming within the next year or so. That's from a range of individuals from different ages, around one or two years old up to 90 years old. We've got a range of really good control lines as well with a huge amount of characterization data attached to them. And all of the lines which are deposited come with historical cell line depositor data. On top of that, we also have a huge range of EBIS QC. So all of the lines that come in are characterized in exactly the same way. And every vial you receive will have been subjected to the same EBIS quality control screening. All of the information associated with the cell lines is collected together in one place and provided to the user. Uh, in the form of a clip, we call it the cell line information pack. The depositors of the cell lines voluntarily give the cell lines to the bank. They retain ownership. The only thing that a user is not able to do is to directly exploit a cell line they obtain from the bank for commercial purposes. Diese Bank sollte idealerweise eine non-for-profit IPSC Bank sein. Und wichtig ist vor allem, dass diese uh, IPSC Linien dann an Freedom to Operate gewähren was in der Vergangenheit schwierig war. The cost of the cell lines is just to cover the production, the extensive quality control of the lines and the distribution to researchers across the globe. Our standard panel of quality control testing includes viability, sterility screening, so that includes mycoplasma and other agents such as bacteria and fungal contaminants. We would also do a cell and identity test using short hand and repeat screening. We would look at marker expression, normally using a flow cytometry assay, looking at markers such as OPT4, SSCA4, SSCA1 and TRA160. We'd also do some differentiation screening, so really testing the potential of the cell line to form uh, trilineage layers. And in addition to that, we'd also screen for human viral pathogens such as hepatitis and HIV. We've also, within EBIS, selected around 70 cell lines to do whole genome sequencing on. And if you apply for access to our data access committee, we could share that sequencing data with you for research use. 
Das IBIS-Projekt wurde ganz klar für die industriellen Bedürfnisse designt von Anfang an und deswegen wurde eine Infrastruktur entwickelt, die sehr robust und auch skalierbar ist. Und daher wurde Fraunhofer, insbesondere das Fraunhofer IBMT, als technischer Partner gewählt, um eine Spiegelbank, die IBIS Mirror Bank, zu etablieren, die hier neueste Technologien anwendet, als Backup dient und eben auch Overflow Capacity bietet und damit die Skalierbarkeit gewährleistet. The eBIS Consortium worked really hard to make sure that the layout of the catalog was simple for users and that all the information was easily accessible. We have over 30 years experience in distributing cell culture and services to researchers worldwide and we use our extensive network to supply researchers. We have an excellent technical support service. Scientists and researchers can contact ECAC via email and telephone for all their inquiries. The catalog will continue to grow into the future.